start, I guess, shall we maybe um, speak to the title of the of the webinar, which is what is an instructor internship? Uh, so, look, 15 years ago or so, um, myself and a colleague were ski instructors in America, and um, we were aware of a, of a problem in the industry, which was that people um, like yourselves wanted to get into the industry and become instructors, um, but it wasn't very easy. Um, uh, resorts often require people to have either certification already, level two, um, say, or lots of experience before they'll hire you uh, onto their staff as an instructor. So um, we went through it the hard way in, in our day. We, we did a lot of uh, training uh, and got certifications uh, for a start and then uh, had to had to get a job through grovelling um, uh, and, and earn a little bit of money the first season before we got proper jobs in the industry um, later on. And uh, so it was a bit tough. So the instructor internship concept uh, is to help you guys bypass those frustrations uh, and combine in, in all in one season uh, the training and certification as well as a job offer so you can step straight into uh, into work as an instructor and um, we've been running those successfully you know for 15 years or so now and um, tweaking them and honing them each year to get them to get them just right but uh, that's sort of in a nutshell what the what the concept what the concept is yeah um, so uh, I guess just a little uh, couple of housekeeping things just with regards to this um, one if you are having a bit of trouble with the streaming of uh, of the live feed then um, what we would recommend is using Google Chrome. That is uh, what's best advised um, if you have any issues. Um, sounds like there's been uh, quite a few questions that have come up, which is fantastic. That's certainly what we're, I guess, the intention behind what we're doing here. Um, the chat section is obviously for you to engage with us in any way, shape or form, so please do as you're doing. Um, also, with the questions, um, it's basically underneath the main video, so you can put forward your own questions. Um, there's sort of an upvote option where I guess, you know, the intention behind that is collectively, if, if you know, there's numerous people wanting the same kind of question answered, we'll try and sort of put that as, I guess, the first priority. Um, but otherwise, we'll just go through the questions as, as they come through and do our best to um, hopefully clarify it. Um, so, I guess just uh, just here, probably one of the first thing Tom uh, has asked here, um, how many hours, if always booked, would I be working a week and how many hours would the course teaching take up? Yep, <clears throat> yeah, great question, Tom. And often one we get asked uh, as a team uh, and our answer is that as a first season ski instructor, you have to be prepared to um, be flexible and work both sometimes uh, a lot and sometimes not so much. Um, and I'm sorry if this answer comes across as a little, little vague. It, it does depend on a few things, such as uh, which resort you end up at, the particular ski, the particular season that you that you encounter. For example, at the moment in Japan, it's uh, it's dumping with snow, and it's uh, it's a great winter season. There's lots and lots of business, um, lots of lessons being requested in the ski schools. So everyone. Uh, is still working a great deal. Um, the, at Christmas time, for example, across the globe and all of the resorts we operate, we tell our interns to be expecting to work most days of the week, and each day you'd be looking to work around six hours a day. Um, that's because ski resorts tend to do about 80% of their business in general, um, particularly you know, Canada and the States and um, Europe over that Christmas New Year period. So everyone's got to be mucking in all hands on deck and working a great deal. Um, so that would be about how much you work over that period of time. Uh, and then after that, uh, when everyone goes back to, to school or, or work after the holidays, um, which is often when our, our Ultimate Plus training um, for those wanting to do Level 2 kicks in, the amount of work you might get at that point in time normally um, decreases a little bit with the uh, number of lessons being booked in the ski school. But um, but look, um, you know, as a first season instructor, um, you, you need to be flexible, as I say, and and each um, person 
um, can do the best they can to try and get more work if that's what they want. Some people that come through our program um, don't don't mind so much if they if they don't work. If it's a great powder day, they might want to what's called backline and uh, put their hand up to not work if they don't need to and, and go and um, hit the power. Uh, other people want to work as much as they can at every opportunity. So if that's the goal for you, you should be putting your best foot forward, um, always showing you're keen, no matter what the lesson, uh, being professional and, and also trying to get um, repeat business from those clients that you're working with. And if that's what you do, you'll get much more hours than someone that uh, someone doesn't, doesn't do those things. Um, in all of our internship programs, uh, you know, they, they run at very popular ski resort towns. So because of that, the combination is always quite tight. So part of our package is making sure that everyone on our internship programs has access to accommodation that they can, that they can live in for the season. Now, part of the program price includes accommodation for the first month or so. And then after that, the idea of the internship is you're there for the whole season, being an instructor so that you take on board the responsibility of the accommodation costs after that first month, once you've started to earn some money as an instructor. Um, as Ashley said, the cost of that accommodation um, varies depending on, on the resort location that you go to. Um, so yeah, there's some places that are quite, quite cheap and uh, some that are more expensive, <laughs> I guess you'd say. Um, now, in addition to that, I guess a perk of being an instructor is that you have access to, to discounts. Um, and so we work very closely with the resorts that offer the job placements. Um, and, and in order to provide those uh, benefits to you, you know, you have that job offer, you start, you work as an instructor, so then you get um, discounts on food and on equipment and bits and pieces like that. So whilst it's also always gonna be more cost effective to go to the supermarket and you know, make yourself a, uh, a cheese toasty in, in the morning before work, you do, as an instructor, get um, access to discounts through our program, which is a which is a cool cool bonus. Yeah. Quite a few questions coming through, guys. Yeah. Really, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and Tom, just I uh, know uh, we asked if it was I guess a specific resort you you're in Cape Bank, so uh, I'm assuming that's on that year. You're probably talking either uh, North Quay or um, Lake Louise option. So. Um, Lake Louise, just so you know, it's a start accommodation. Um, you're looking around two hundred and eighty uh, Canadian dollars per month, um, and for the bank one, um, yeah, there's a little bit more information on our resort page um, for bank. From the top of my head, it's uh, between fourteen to seventeen Canadian dollars per night. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps to answer your questions there. Yeah. Is this, is this Lee, is it? Someone's asked there uh, whether a non-skier can participate in the program. Uh, <clears throat> good question. We often get asked how good you need to be to uh, do the internship program. Uh, just to clarify, first of all, we are open to snowboarders too. So if you are not a skier but you are a snowboarder, there are some places for snowboarders. However, they're very, very limited uh, because there's not as much work for snowboarders in the ski and snowboard industry. All snowboarders that we talk to, <clears throat> we recommend, uh, if you can ski at all, to, to go down the line of perhaps doing a ski certification first or one of our dual certification programs because uh, you are going to be able to earn a lot more uh, money uh, as a first season instructor uh, being able to ski. There's just a lot more ski lessons that come through the doors of ski schools still. Um, so that's that's that part of it. Uh, secondarily, the, the ability level, we uh, have a minimum standard for skiers and snowboarders of being able to comfortably link turns on blue terrain um, to enter our internship program. Now again, depending on um, your level of ability and experience and desired resort, that might be different. For example, going to Rebelstoke in Canada, um, we err on the side of being uh, stronger than perhaps some of the other resorts, um, purely because it's a more, it's a steeper, it's a steeper location. Um, and so, yeah, you, the, the the message is that you do not need to be, you know, a, um, a ski racer or an amazing skier to do our program. 
the best instructors are often those who um, are great with people, uh, good communicators, and not necessarily those that are amazing skiers because a lot of the lessons you'll do as a first season instructor will be with, with kids um, and or with lower level uh, skiers. Certainly you get to do some of the higher level ones as well, but you know, a lot of the lessons you'll do will be lower level, so it's more important you get the basics right. Um, you, you are open to changing your own style to be able to demonstrate those great lower level skills and that, you hear, and that your clients have a good time. At the end of the day, the resort um, ski schools will want their clients, um, you know, the people you're teaching, to have a good time and want to come back uh, for their holiday next time. So if you can uh, have fun with your, with your clients, then, then you've, got it, you've got it in the bag. Yeah. Hopefully that answers that, that question. Okay, um, so we'll obviously have a little look at some other other questions that are coming up from the group. Um, yeah, so maybe the next one um, we've just been asked. So whether there are restrictions on age um, in terms of joining the program? Very good question. Um, and yeah, ultimately. Uh, I guess it, once again, you know, this is probably a big reason why we do generally like to speak to people over the phone um, in the early instances, just because there are quite a few intricacies um, involved which relate to things like visas, um, which also reflects you know, places you can go to do a working uh, internship with us. So I guess in terms of any restrictions, uh, Basically, for getting a working holiday visa, if you want, let's just say, for example, you're from the United Kingdom and you're looking at going to Canada or Japan or New Zealand. Um, so, basically, for you to be able to go to one of those countries, you need a valid visa because you're going to engage in some work. Um, so, we do go, obviously, with our internships beyond just the training and certification. So, you've got that guaranteed job offer. And with that, um, that working holiday visa requirement, typically it's between the ages of 18 to 30. So that, that will be normally the makeup of most people on the program. Um, it's not so strictly has to be that, that sort of age range, uh, but that's normally who can go to our international locations to do an internship. Um, obviously, if you're from the likes of the UK and you're a skier and you want to go to Switzerland, um, it's not a working holiday visa that you require for that kind of um, arrangement. So you could be over the age of 30. Um, likewise, if you want to come to New Zealand and you're over the age of 30, um, there is another type of visa that we can sort of help you out um, with information on, uh, which would allow you up to the age of 35. Uh, typically, yeah, so normally 18 is kind of the, um, at least for most instances, it's the ability for you to go to an internship. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess in, in, in summary too, if if you're not sure, get in touch with us because we've developed over the years a number of resort locations and in different places around the world. So really anyone of any age can do something with us. It's just a matter of talking with us about the options and Ashley and his team um, you know, know, know where you can go. It's just a matter of uh, us filtering out the options for you and presenting them. But because of our you know, a global network, we certainly have options for everybody, um, and including those if you, you know, if you, if you don't end up wanting to work, we've got options for anybody there too. But certainly if you do want to work, there are yeah, options for internships in all the locations in Europe and New Zealand, Japan, Canada, the States, so yeah, yeah. Good question though, good question. Okay. Um so is, is the level two qualification included? Uh, so good question on that one. Um, we basically have, um, with all our internships, they're, they're all set up, everyone's going to level one. Uh, so level one is an inclusion on all of our programs, regardless of whether it's a training program or an internship. Um, and we do provide the level two training as well. Um, if you're doing the likes of an 11 week training program in Canada, or if you're doing an ultimate plus internship in one of our um, different resorts around the world. Um, so the level two training is provided. Uh, in terms of the level two exam, um, we do have this included uh, if you were to do the ultimate plus in the likes of 
Ever Green in Japan, which is in the Hakata area. Um, so that's something that we do have included specifically on that particular program. Um, in terms of all the other options, so the Eleven Week or the Ultimate Plus Internships, which is all geared towards Level 2, um, we have yeah, all the training up to the date that you'd be looking to do the Level 2. Um, the Level 2 would be still something you would need to, uh, I guess, confirm when you're out there on the program. Um, and I guess the, the reality is that often for a lot of people doing the Level 1 qualification, you know, I think that's often a speak from the perspective of someone that's you know, examining people and, and being involved with the training of, of those people on the program. I think it's always a, a good idea just to sort of reassess things in terms of uh, getting feedback from the examiner so you can kind of know the direction you're getting, sort of what exactly you need to be done and what you need to focus on um, to get to that level. So um, that, that is probably one of, the, one of the reasons that we do uh, not have the legal two exam included in all locations. Um, yeah, maybe you're in a few Yeah, yeah look, in, in summary, um, it's a good goal to have doing the level two qualification. Some people come through our program and obtain that. We certainly have pathways for that to happen, and that's the way we've organised, particularly the ultimate plus uh, internship program. Now, as Ashley said, the reason we don't include the exam fees in the program cost uh, in many of our programs is that because We've seen when we have, or other programs that have, where people have actually decided or they haven't been able to sit that level two exam for a number of reasons, whether it's through um, an injury or not developing as strong, strongly as they they'd hoped, or whether the, uh, their trainer just thinks they're not quite ready and they require a little bit more time to sit a labour exam. So we put the autonomy or the power um, in terms of time frame back in your hands as an intern as to when you want to sit that exam. Um, but we provide the training for you to get there and certainly encourage people to try and, and do that at, at, um, at all if they, if they want to. It's a good goal, yeah. Um, so good good question there. Um, yeah, Al, someone's asking here about the how much you would receive per hour as an instructor. Um, it's a good it's a good question and again varies a lot depending on the on the result. Um, actually, you probably know more details there than... Yeah, so um, it, it varies certainly between different countries and, and also different resorts. So it, it can be at times a little bit of a hard one for us to be extremely specific um, because it, it does depend ultimately at the end of the day on a resort um, and the contract that they will provide to you. Um, to give you a bit of an indication, I would say probably in terms of the top paying areas, you'd be looking really at Switzerland as the highest hourly rate. Um, so you're normally looking of around uh, 17 to 19 Swiss francs per hour. Um, the likes of um, Japan, that's um, that's one where yeah, uh, you're actually paid at a, at a very good level um, for a, a level one qualified instructor. I think overall, um, across most resorts, it's a very, I guess, quite a generous um, level one uh, qualified rate. Um, so, and, and the good thing with Japan is that it is, you know, there's good levels of work out there. Um, if you're looking at somewhere like New Zealand or the likes of Canada, for example, um, New Zealand, you can be yeah, look, and once again, it's a good hourly rate of, um, yeah, the likes of Japan, I guess, to first thing, finish off on that person, um, somewhere around 11 and a half hours would probably be, I guess, the top top paying rate of the likes of um, in Japan. Uh, New Zealand, you're, you're paid a good hourly rate, which would be roughly around um, 20, over $20, around $23 per hour. Um, once again, we, uh, I guess, can't, uh, necessarily say with an absolute, you know, that there may be a little bit of variance because it is ultimately at the end of the day the employment resort that comes up with pay rate as opposed to ourselves. Um, but we do obviously our best to kind of um, get the right kind of information here with it. Yeah, and look, some, some resorts too have certain bonuses and kickbacks and extra things that we haven't spoken of here yet. For example, some resorts in Canada um, give a bonus if you if you make it to the end of the season with them, um, they might give a bonus back to you. Um, there, there might be um, 
uh, extra, if you have a certain number of children in your class, you might be given an extra amount of money. Um, so, so resorts have certain incentives there, and, and we haven't spoken either about about tips. Um, you certainly can't rely on tips, but in North America the, and other countries, more and more they do happen. If you um, uh, you know if you do a great job, uh, provide a great service, then certainly some uh, clients, you know, particularly parents of kids that you teach, uh, will be keen keen to give you give you tips um, as a little cash bonus when they pick up their their students. But um, yeah, so there's certainly ways to, to make it work for you. I know some um, uh, instructors that have come through with us have made their own little business cards and handed them out when they've done lessons. So. Certainly, if that's, you know, there's a few questions here about that, how much you earn and hourly wages, etc. Um, there are things you can do to tweak the amount of money that you might you might be able to get. Um, yeah, but certainly, as a first season instructor, we certainly don't tell anyone to expect to earn um, bags of money. Um, you know, the instruction industry is one where you've got to get in there, and, and if you want to be making lots of money as an instructor, you want to be looking at higher certifications and um, spending a few few years in the in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And each qualification level you, you go, like it, it is something that I think um, I was thinking about this uh, relatively recently. That you know, typical kind of job roles that you know, if, if you were to get a pay increase for a job, um, you know, it, it's normally in the it could be in the vicinity of fifty cents a dollar extra an hour or something like that. However, in this industry, it is actually um, quite a quite a bit more than that. Um, you know, in, in dollars um, that you'll be getting for each certification level, so it does make quite a substantial difference. And it is certainly an industry that um, I guess recognises yeah, people's own sort of self uh, self motivation and, and personal development in themselves, really. Yeah. And just one more note on the on the I guess the amount of money you can earn. As Ash alluded to before, there is a program we have in Japan with club, a club need resort, and that is a bit different. It's not an hourly wage, but it's a, it's a daily or weekly salary. So you work every day um, for the week, and then you receive a high you know, salary for that. So it's very, for those that are interested in a really regular, guaranteed sort of payment for the season, um, then that would be a great option. You know, food is um, is part of the package there, uh, but you receive a um, you know a regular salary every week. Um, so yeah, something to something to consider. And again, talking to us about your options is the best idea there. Um, great. So some more questions here. Um, we've heard yeah, availability is a great question. Um, so yeah, there's two two aspects to availability. Um, first of all, as Ash mentioned. Uh, Depending on where you want to go, there are work visas that you need to obtain. And yes, right now, if you're looking to go to Canada and you're from the UK, then it's important that you get onto it very quickly because there's a limited number of working holiday visas. You need to follow a set series of steps and you need to get onto it as soon as possible. So yeah, if that, if that is a country you're interested in going to, if you're from the UK and you want to go to Canada uh, this coming winter, then certainly get, in, get involved and get started very, very quickly because there are a limited number of working visas. Um, there. If you want to go to Canada and you're from uh, another country, you're from you know, the States or New Zealand or Australia or, or Europe, uh, then, there, then there's still um, important to get onto it, but there's not quite as much um, stress in terms of the uh, availability of working holiday visas. Um, there's, a bit, there's a bit more availability there. The second uh, aspect to availability is the places we have available. Um, we work with a number of resorts, uh, which, which provides you more options. Uh, we also only have a certain number of places at each resort because each ski school we work with um, only hires a certain number of staff each season uh, to balance the number of lessons you're going to have through the year. So we're, we're very lucky to have uh, established ourselves and, and got a, a good number of places at each resort, but each year we sell out and each year people do contact us wanting to go to a particular place and inevitably we don't have any left. So it's important to get in touch with us very quickly to talk about your options and try and get a place in the location you want to go to to avoid missing out there as well. Hopefully that, that answers that question, hopefully. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, I do see there's a couple of people had a, a bit of trouble hearing me, um, so I'll try and... Uh, it, it is, at the end of the day, a microphone on the 
on the screen that we're on here, so I'll, I'll just try and be a bit closer and a bit louder um, and do let me know if we're still having trouble. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go through, I guess, some other questions. Um, uh, yeah, so Briar, just, um, I guess you've got a, a question just regarding uh, their, their scholarships. Um, yep, certainly a good question. Um, and I guess, you know, to, to give you a bit of an answer to that, we, we do at, at certain times um, have a scholarship option, um, which people, you know, can, can certainly apply for. Uh, we don't have anything running at present though. Um, it's something that I guess can come up time, time, time to time. Um, and yeah, it's really a, a, an opportunity for you to, I guess, present yourself to us. We, we do really, I guess, from our side of things, need to know as much as we can about um, each person's qualities and, and sort of background experiences you know, through any stage of the year when you're inquiring. Um, so the scholarship is sort of, I guess, something that uh, once again people can apply for that, um, just when we have those particular applications open. Uh, but yeah, at this stage we don't actually have uh, yeah, look, each year we try and uh, offer one or two places to people that may be in need there or may need some assistance in, 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 uh, in the form of a scholarship. Um, it may or may not happen, so it's certainly not something that I would, you know, you would rely on. Um, but, um, but get in touch with us if you have any questions and we can, we can talk about that. Um, yeah, uh, normally particular people, particular backgrounds, particular location. Um, yeah, particular time. So uh, yeah, hopefully that answers that that question. Yeah. Um, the the cost. Yeah. What is the, what is the cost? Uh, someone's asked here. It's a great question, of course. On our website, we have listed uh, page dates and prices, which which covers the cost of each different program in the different locations. Um, so every internship program is. Not every, but most internship programs we run are a different price because they operate in different locations. Um, the price includes everything you need to get set up for that first season. Um, we also have an orientation, uh, which happens at the start of the winter when everyone meets uh, in a particular city that's appropriate. For example, in Canada, we either meet in Vancouver or in Calgary, depending on where you're going. Uh, and during that orientation, we we cover all things like some social events and some admin, like social security numbers and bank accounts, um, and give a chance to ease our way into the program, our staff, and um, what needs to be done. And then from there, that program fee includes everything, uh, as I said, to get started. So we have staff on the ground, we have the training program for the first few weeks, the accommodation for the first few weeks, the transport um, required, the passes, um, our, our staffing and the certifications and, um, and various resources that go along with, with getting those. So, um, yeah, if, if you can't find uh, a particular price on our website that you're looking for, please email us directly and we can, we can answer that question, but it should be pretty clear on the website if you find that page. Yeah. yeah. So, sometimes, I guess, this is a question that we do get um, quite a bit, and and it can sometimes be the way that we've actually sort of found us. Um, you know, we, are, we are presented in, in a number of different places, you know, I guess where, where people are, are looking for these kind of opportunities and sometimes it may be that you haven't actually specifically seen our website. So that's, um, that's one reason that you might may not know the cost, which is perfectly understandable. Um, we do also have, uh, it, it is quite a range and, and it once again is dictated by whereabouts you want to go the program inclusion, so there is a bit of variance. It's yeah, a bit of range. Yeah, so the range is probably um, whether they started around uh, four four thousand dollars or so, and go right up to um, you know over to over ten thousand dollars. So that's that's hits the massive range, and us not being able to give a particular price there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably the easiest thing is once we've had that discussion, you know, we've worked it out. Um, your background, you know, what kind of snow sports experience you have, um, you know, if you've got a particular location, why we can just sort of narrow that all down, it makes it a fair bit easier. Um, so we're not talking a generic vast sort of range, uh, I guess, um, it makes us, I, I guess allow, allows us to be a bit more specific with it all. 
Yep, and just bear in mind the exchange rates too. So our prices are predominantly in US dollars, so they aren't going to be as many pounds. Um, so we do have a, a, um, a currency converter on the website you can press and see how many um, Australian dollars or pounds or euros or, or New Zealand dollars or wherever you're from, um, the currency uh, that you might need to see as a uh, guide rather than an exact. Um, yeah, so hopefully that uh, will give you some guidance there, yeah. And if, if you are you know, looking, I guess, a bit further into the future, we can do offer early sign-up discounts you know, in terms of uh, yep. we do want to recognise those that express interest early, you know, there is an advantage in doing so. Um, so I guess just to inquire with us about that, if you're a bit, a bit more interested to know more. Yep, in fact, our early booking discount uh, for the coming winter is about to run out as it happens. So, uh, yeah, for that's for the Northern Hemisphere winter. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I bet it helps. Right. Some great questions, guys. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah, keep, keep them rolling <laughs> and, and comment as well if, if, uh, if we haven't quite answered something uh, to the extent that you'd like it to be. Okay, we might just, uh, we'll just sort of swap it up. There's a good question here that um, has just recently come up, which is about you know, what exactly does a guaranteed job offer mean? Um, is it a guaranteed job or a guaranteed offer? Um, very, very good question. And you know, with our, all our programs, it is something that we have you know, specified every single internship. Um, and that's a unique thing of, uh, I guess, why people specifically come to us, you know, that we do have that capability. Um, basically, the way that works is that the resort, you know, the, the summer school school that you end up um, being employed at, they have a set allocation. So these are places that would otherwise be going out to qualified and experienced instructors. Uh, so they have taken that specific allocation out of their normal employment process. So your I guess getting that advantage, um, you know, an easier, earlier entry into an instructing role than you would otherwise have. Um, and with the guaranteed job offer, the way that it works is that you have to be attending all the training prior to doing the level one exam. Um, now, from the perspective of someone being a trainee and a, you know, an intern on the program, that first sort of training period is, is crucial for the resort to basically see you as a prospect of employee. So what, what we do to specify on that is that you do have to be, I guess, turning up with the, the right attitude. Um, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it is an important position. Um, they want to hire each and every one on the program. Um, from our processes, we, we do make a, a determination of, um, you know, each individual's qualities and how we feel they will best represent the resort. Um, so we do a pre-screening process where we're making sure that we're putting the right kind of people onto the programs that we feel are going to have a good fit. Um, but yeah, at the same time, if you're out there and you do have to be treating the training area, I guess, quite professionally, um, that's things like you know, turning up on time, you have to consistently turn up late, that's probably not a very good um, I guess, prospect for you getting an employment position, they might have some concerns. Uh, obviously, if there's a valid reason, there's a valid reason, but, um, and just sort of overall professionalism and attitude, really, I guess, would be the, the key things. Um, the the final thing, really, in the step uh, for you getting the job is really that you have to pass the line exam. So, um, it is subject to those things. But um, we, we feel confident that if someone goes in there with that, that intention, that understanding, um, that they should successfully get the, uh, the job. Yeah, that's something that we've, we've got that guarantee for. Yep, just to qualify that, it's a great summary. Um, it is very, very rare over, the, the, over a decade of operation that anyone does not end up working um, through our program. Um, when you sign up, we've, we, it is a, a difference with educating adventures with EA Ski and Snowboard. You have that guaranteed job offer. So that's yours. That's sitting there on your shoulder as you come through our program, uh, ready to start work. Now, as Ashley said, um, you need to make sure you, you uh, act as a normal employee would and all going well, it's fine and you start work. But if you don't, 
uh, people don't pass the level one exam. Um, you do get another opportunity to do that. You don't. It's not all lost. You can have another another crack at it and then start. Or if you just are not acting uh, like an employee should, uh, then you won't be able to start that employment. But that is very unlikely, very rare, um, and it is a great advantage to come through our program to know that that employment position um, has been allocated to you and um, all going well, you start that work, you get given the uniform and, and you're underway. So it is something to be wary of. I know that there's some other operators out there who do uh, offer similar programs, but we are aware that some of them don't have the same set up with regards to these employment um, positions. So yeah, it's something to be wary of. We think it's a very important part of your first season being able to have that uh, guaranteed job offer allocated to you. Um, it makes for a wonderful season, a great experience, and um, yeah, we, we, uh, we're very proud of that. Yeah, someone's asked here about our favourite resorts. What would your favourite resort be for an internship? Um, great question. There's so many resorts. Ashley, um, what would your favourite resort be? Um, at, at this stage, I guess, um, probably I'll, I'll speak from one that I'd, I'd really like to go to. Um, I think Revelstoke is um, something that just keeps coming up. Um, I've spent some time in Canada. I've, I've been to most of the resorts that we offer the internships, but Rebel Stoke hasn't, hasn't uh, quite eventuated just yet for me, so uh, that was something that, that I'd like to go to one day. Um, yeah, just keep hearing lots of good things about it, and it's, yeah, it's a good, good quality mountain. Um, I don't know, Aaron, have you got... Yeah, yeah, damn it, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, <laughs> look, I've been to all of the resorts we operate at, very luckily, and uh, I, I do have a soft spot for Rebel Stoke. It is an amazing place. Um, but all of the resorts we operate at, just to be clear, are, are brilliant. We don't have any on there that um, that are not going to be able to offer a fantastic experience, and they're all great in their own in their own right. They're very very different um, as well. Um, but look, Japan is a location that uh, I've, I've become more fond of lately. They have incredible snow there, and the culture is obviously quite different. So um, so look, for me as a first year instructor, if I was to take myself back. I might, you know, be, be thinking seriously about going to Japan, somewhere like Club Med, where where the snow is incredible, the package is amazing. As a first year instructor, you get a, you get a regular wage, um, and we have a lot of people going there, so there's a good social crew. Um, and then, you know, Japan as a country to travel in uh, is uh, is really awesome too. Everyone's so friendly and nice. It's very safe, um, and uh, yeah, yes, it's it's really it's amazing. So um, so hopefully that gives some. Uh, some of our little uh, thoughts there. Um, but uh, yeah, so another question here, the positives of the internship um, versus the positives of a ski instructor course. A good question from Tom there actually, because hopefully it is clear that there are, we, we're talking about an internship program here, Ashley and I today. Uh, that is an, a program which includes the guaranteed job offer. Um, so the structure is um, a full season course with uh, training and certification during the first three weeks of, this, of the winter. Uh, then, then you start work as an instructor and some of those internship programs include further training and further certifications, etc. cetera. Um, now the other type of program we, off we offer, um, quite separate, is a straight training course. Now they... Uh, uh, don't involve the guaranteed job offer. So they might be for people that don't have a full season, people that don't have the ability or the, uh, or the, or the need or want to, to work. Um, and so for those programs, um, we, we offer those. You, you come out and they're very um, set the training um, every week for the full course. For example, our 11-week ski instructor training course um, lasts for 11 weeks. You come out, you do level one first, you, you also get the avalanche training training course, the first aid course, and then you go into level two training. Um, so it's, it's, it's a full course of training there, and that runs at um, Lake Louise, for example. So um, the, the benefits, obviously, of the internship uh, include being able to be there for the full season, being able to work as an instructor, um, Get that uh, experience, get a, get a reference, a res you know, on your on your resume, being able to take that experience on to another job, whether it's ski instructing or any job, it's it's good to have. Whereas the the benefits of the of the straight training course that doesn't include work 
would be that you get to concentrate, you know, 100% on your skiing or riding, your improvement, your certification bag, um, and uh, and the season that you that you have. There's, there's no there's no work. So, um, and also it gives you the benefit of being able to lock in a certain set of dates and then carry on with whatever you uh, wanted to do, work or play or otherwise. So. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea there about the benefits of each individual course type that we that we offer. Yeah, I guess another positive of it because you're asking for positives of the ski instructor course um, is that you do you do get um, accommodation start to finish. So um, so obviously there's no concerns that you know obviously with our internships um, you know you've got that capability to earn and can not just helping to support yourself after the first month uh, with the training program we're covering it start to finish. So um, you're not sort of having to worry about sort of drawing into savings or anything like that. Um, and I guess the big thing as well is, you know, you do get, like Erin said, you know, I think it's a bit more training focused. You actually probably will end up with more training as a result. Um, yeah, but hopefully that helps. Yeah, your follow-up question, Tom, to that was which one you'd recommend for someone interested in a career in instructing? Uh, I think definitely if you can do the internship, then go straight into that. Get into the industry if you want a career in ski instructing. Um, you may as well figure out very quickly if it's something you want to do or not. And the way to do that is to get into an internship. Um, go, you know, get the training certification, start work, get a full season under your belt, um, and then go from there. It's, it is, you know, as with the signage says, the fast track and to your instructor dreams, and that's why it's been created for those people that want to get into the industry. Um, and bypass those challenges that, that you know I experienced when I was trying to do it many years ago. So um, yeah, that would be my recommendation, Tom, for sure. Um, yeah, I guess it's um, yeah. At the end of the day, probably the, the big thing that you get out of the internships, and I think this is something that um, I guess it's not specifically uh, an inclusion um, that we say, but it's it's I guess. A, a very valuable thing is that networking capability. Um, you will be probably very, um, very savvy, I guess, with how the industry works. You'll have that exposure to you know, qualified, well-experienced instructors. You can pick their brains. You know, find out where to work in other seasons. They've seen your work, so it's it kind of just, I guess, gives you that little, I guess, bit, bit of capability to find other jobs. Um, I guess. For sure, for sure. And someone's asked there if we have any regrets mm -hmm. as to how we went through the route we did. Anything we'd do differently was uh, have you had a total ball of a life? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think I think I could say I have actually. Um, but look, uh, as I said at the start, one of the reasons we set up the internship program uh, was because there was no easy pathway to becoming an instructor back when we went through it. It was harder. Um, and so we set this program up in order to make it more achievable, more attainable to become an instructor, uh, to, to sort of clear the path, to show you the easy way to do it. Um, and that's taken a lot of work getting results on board with the concept as well. Um, we've done that over the, over the years and, and are very stoked with the results we've got that work with us to be able to provide these places for you as a first year instructor to come into their ski school. Um, so... I don't have regrets about the way I did it, but certainly uh, I'd like to do it the internship way if I had a had a choice again, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I guess from my side, um, when I when I first got qualified, um, the internship didn't didn't exist. Um, yeah, the, the concept originated in two thousand six. Um, I was qualified before that. Um, I guess probably my biggest regret is that I probably should have, um, I guess, followed my heart and, and started started the process a little bit earlier um, when I was weighing it all up. Um, I guess I did the first season not really knowing 100%, you know, if it's going to be a long-term thing or not. Um, you know, I had passion for skiing. It was, it was my thing. I'd done it quite a lot from an early age. Um, I guess the big, probably the big um, payoff I've found is it's, it's given me opportunities to you know, travel around the world, you know, awesome locations, Japan, Canada, um, most recently, South America, um, China, um, of all places. So it's, it's something that um, I guess looking back and reflection of it, I've, I've worked every single season in the industry since um, 2004. So it's, it's uh, just 
it's now a good part of my life. And, and you can make it a career, you can make it a lifestyle that you know, doesn't have to end, and you can do back to back winters um, until, you, until the day you die. Um, and then there's people well into their 60s, um, possibly even more in some results, uh, that are still teaching. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's it's yeah. a fantastic career path. It's a fantastic, uh, you know, thing to be involved in the ski industry. And um, I think if you're thinking about it at all, then like I said, get in there and, and, and do it. Uh, you certainly won't regret it. No, I can tell you for sure. We don't get anyone coming through our programs saying, "Oh, I regret, I regret not waiting a year to do that." I mean, everyone's just stoked that they've done it. Um, the only regrets we get are those that are, are getting in touch with us now, saying, "I wish I'd done this earlier." Um, so yeah, get in, if you're thinking about it, get, in, get involved for sure. The final thing is a question here about whether resorts accept people um, applying for a job with them outside of the uh, EA program. Um, and look, I each season go around all of our ski schools and talk to the ski school directors. Um, most of the ski school directors I talk to still have the rule. Uh, recently I was talking to Josh Foster, ski school director at Big White in Canada. Their standard application um, level is that you have to be level two with at least two seasons of experience to be considered for a job there outside the EA internship program. So that's an example. People are still finding it difficult outside uh, our program to get uh, a job. Uh, each resort is different, so there are going to be some places that have a lower level of um, uh, a lower level to be able to apply for a first season job. Certainly, I know of stories where people have managed to, with a level one. Um, go and get a job in, in certain places, but uh, look, most of the resorts we work with uh, certainly require um, at least a certification and some experience before they will um, they will consider you. So, um, hence the internship program, and hence this uh, this chat today. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, hopefully, that uh, answers that question there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, Tom, just asking you, just a final question there, obviously we'll, we'll probably make this the last one. Yeah. Um, so in, in smaller resorts, do you, do you need this experience? Because um, Big White is a large resort. Um, well, we're using, using New Zealand as an example. I mean, yeah. New Zealand is a, um, has, a, has, a, has a few small resorts, um, but it's even harder to get in as, a, as an instructor to the resorts in New Zealand like those with NZ Ski. Remarkables, Coronet, um, Mount Hutt. I mean, uh, and comparatively, they're quite small resorts, but are some of the most difficult to get a job in um, on the planet, actually. So, um, and, and all, I mean, for example, most, if not all, I think of the places we have available at those locations for the coming winter have been um, been sold out for a little while, um, a few a few left maybe. But um, so yes, even small resorts have the same issue. Again, um, there'll be some small resorts out there off the beaten track that maybe don't have the same level of um, experience or certifications required, but um, but most most in our experience certainly certainly do. Um, yeah, yeah. But look, um, it's been almost an hour, so it's some, some good, really good content, really good content there. Um, yeah. So I guess just just to sort of um, summarise here, obviously. Uh, one of the one of the big things, like like we sort of mentioned earlier, is that uh, it, it's very hard for us, I guess, to, to make sort of assessments without really knowing too much about each individual. So, if you haven't been in touch, um, you know, recently, and you sort of keen to know a little bit more, then certainly be in touch with um, your training consultant. You know, that, that is their role to to advise you and guide you through the process. Um, it's obviously what we're here for at the end of the day, and we love what we do. Yep, and on that, we, we're very proud of the team here. Again, quite unique to the industry. We have a large team. Uh, there's about six or seven full-time um, people like Ashley with amazing experience um, of skiing and training and constructing around the world in our various locations that are talking to people like you every day about our options and, and the process that you need to go through or can go through to fulfill your dreams of becoming an instructor. So certainly... Um, yeah, get in touch with our team. That's what they're there for, and um, we'd be really, really happy to um, help you along your pathway there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't um, been in touch recently, we've got um, just to see if you qualify by the next um, in green there, also on check feed. Just um, that's probably the easiest way for us to just make that sort of determination. Um, and 
yeah, we're going to host um, some other webinars uh, coming up. So if you do want to follow us, um, there is a follow link, um, uh, I believe, on this page. So yeah, just just that'll give us, uh, I guess, your details so we can kind of alert you on um, future day ones of interest. Yeah. Uh, so any other any other particular topics that people might want, let us know. But uh, thanks for coming, guys, and good luck. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. -bye.